Recently I played a game called Raiders of the North Sea and then I also saw that there was another game that seemed to be related to that one, same publisher, same art, called Explorers of the North Sea. Also, like the previous game, this is a Euro game, definitely it has a theme, but uh, it is very lightly represented, there is an assimilationist approach. It is about using Euro game mechanics with high quality components and fairly linear, fairly straightforward gameplay to achieve objectives, collect points, and so on and so forth. Um, in a nutshell, gameplay of uh, Explorers of the North Sea to me is Carcassonne meets uh, Pick Up and Deliver, which doesn't have to be a bad thing, but it's a good thing. Who knows? We'll talk about this in the conclusions of my video. First, let's have a closer look at the game. Each player controls a group of Vikings, which are Meeple Vikings, and you place your Vikings on the land on the starting tile. There are two such tiles and they are both double sided for variable setup. Each player also has a launch ship, really, really neat, and also some outposts that you will build during the game, hopefully. Then there is this big stack of tiles, so they are shuffled at the beginning of the game and then each player receives a hand of three. So that's neat because as you can imagine you will be placing tiles on the table as the game progresses but you're not stuck with whatever tile you draw like in some other games and you have a list of choice and choices. When it is your turn, uh, the first thing that you do is you play a tile from your hand and the tile that you play needs to be consistent uh, with the land and water areas that are already out there. That would be a legal placement, that would be a legal placement, this would be so illegal that it's almost ridiculous, etc, etc, etc. So, Basically, you play a tile, then you can perform four actions, up to four actions, then you replenish your hand up to three by drawing another tile, and your turn is over. When you draw a tile, when you place a tile, actually, you also need to populate it. There are symbols on these tiles that indicate the various things that you place on them. Livestock, for example, this is chicken. I think that's chicken. And then you have a nice cheap all, I guess you guess what that means. Uh, then you have these things here, which are grass or goats. Uh, the livestock is a little small, but you do have these beyond adorable animal, uh, wooden animals here to mark the livestock that is found during the game. But I have to say, sometimes the art, uh, uh, the black ones and the gray ones, they kind of look almost the same in the art. We have to double check. In any case, when you think you have identified the correct livestock, you place it there. That's not the only thing that you may find in your explorations. You may also find areas that have settlements. Then there is this group of tiles here, which are shuffled face down at the beginning of the game. And whenever a settlement is found, you draw one randomly. As you can see, they have different numbers under there. You draw one randomly and you place it on the settlement. Now that is the strength of that settlement that, as you can imagine, will have to match or exceed in order to take control of that settlement. Another thing that's gonna be out there, more livestock. Another thing that can be out there is enemy ships. Enemy ships. When you encounter an enemy ship, you take a token from a pool of enemy ships and you place it there, as simple as that. Now, we said that you can perform actions after you have drawn your tile and, and after you have placed your tile and populated it if need be. As you can imagine, then the board will grow, can grow, can grow in different directions. It'll look really nice, it looks really neat at the end. I like the look of the board at the end of the game. Once you have placed your tile, it's time to perform your four actions, or up to four actions. For an action, you can load Vikings on your ship, and you can load up to three. For an action, you can unload the Vikings. 
for an action you can move to an X adjacent to where you are moving only through water because otherwise it just looks stupid if you start moving on land with the ship for an action you can also unload some of your Vikings and for another action you can load livestock um, which is cute for an action, I guess you guessed it, for an action you can unload livestock, in which case then it goes in your play area. When you're moving around, dun -dun 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 -dun, you are also trying to take control of settlements, which you can do by putting in the corresponding area a number of Vikings, which is equal to or higher than the strength of the settlement, and then you simply take that settlement. And this is pretty much a free action. If you unload, if you bring uh, a sufficient number of Vikings, then automatically you take control of that settlement and you take the token. When you move in an area with an enemy ship, also as a free action, automatically you defeat that ship. Uh, and then you look at the bottom of the token and you may have one or two symbols. This indicates that you won the battle and hooray, that's it. This indicates that you won the battle, but alas, you took a casualty, so one of your one of your Vikings is removed from the game, which is why you can enter an area with an enemy ship only if you have at least two Vikings, so that if one is lost, there's still somebody that can that can move with the ship, because of course the ship cannot move by itself. What is that? A, you know, remote control drone? No, it ain't. It's a ship. So. Uh, losing Vikings is an interesting thing because, of course, now you have fewer resources on the board, but uh, since Vikings were maniacs that really like the idea of dying in battle, uh, you may score points at the end of the game and you may score a considerable number of points based on that. Other actions, from time to time, given the configuration of the land and such, you may have to move from land, uh, from a land area to a land area. So yes, your Vikings can move from a tile to another without the ship moving on land, and it costs an action to move one or two Vikings. Uh, you can also transport livestock as you do it. Another important action, which actually takes two actions to complete, is to build outposts. You build an outpost in the intersection between three axes. So for example, for example, this would be a legal placement because it has to be an intersection that is of course entirely surrounded by land. You also need to have two Vikings, uh, at least two Vikings in the three axes surrounding that intersection, but they may be on the same hex. So by spending two actions, you build an outpost, uh, which also will be worth points at the end of the game and will help you establish control over that, over that area. And having control of areas is pretty important because at the end of the game, islands may score, but only the islands that have been completed. This one, for example, would score at the end of the game. This one, who knows, it depends whether or not it's still uh, unfinished or it is complete at the end of the game. These are the main actions, so these are the main things that happen. Place a tile, perform actions, pretty much going around, raiding settlements, uh, taking livestock, picking it up and delivering it back home and trying to build outposts until, well, until the end of the game, which happens when you exhaust the tiles. At the point you score points. Now there are lots of ways for you to score points. Luckily enough, the game comes with this very convenient pad that tells you about all of the things that you get to score. Also, at the beginning of the game, each player receives uh, one of these captains. Well, technically you receive two, and then you choose the one that you want to keep, and each captain has a unique condition that gives you extra victory points at the end of the game. So players will score in slightly different ways, which can, of course, color their strategy differently. These captains also give you a nice summary of the possible actions, plus a summary of the scoring at the end of the game. Deliver livestock. To score deliver livestock, you take the livestock that you put uh, that you brought to the land and then you put in your play area and you put the little cute wooden animals in set. Each set must only have animals that are different from one another. So for example, I have two pigs, I need to place them in different sets. Uh, this, for example, would be 
two sets. And if these are the animals that I have, then I can form them in three sets like that. Then the sets are scored as the captain shows, the captain log shows you. A single animal in a set, or a set of a single animal is one point, two animals, three points, six, 10, 15, 21, if you have a set with all six available animals. So you score each set and you write it down on your very useful uh, pad here. Outpost, the number of outposts also matters. A single outpost that you constructed in the game gives you two points, two give you five points, three give you nine points, and so on. And this and five is the maximum number of outposts that you have and that you can build. Destroyed enemy ships, uh, victory point H. Raided settlements, simply the military strength, uh, that is the number that you found on the settlement when you raided it. Viking deaths, if you, this is pretty much the number of Vikings that you died uh, squared is the number of victory points that this little aspect of the game gives you. So that can be pretty huge because three dead Vikings is nine points, four dead Vikings is 16 points. Really powerful. Of course, again, maybe very challenging because, um, well, then you have, we have considerably fewer Vikings than anybody else. Controlled islands. Uh, to determine who has control on an island, you count the influence. Each Viking that you have on an island is a single influence point. Each outpost is two points. For example, I would have four influence points. Suppose that there are three enemy Vikings here. Haha, <laughs> too bad I still have control because I have four. The player that has uh, the most influence on an island scores the island, and the islands are worth a victory point per tile. So that's pretty neat because that would be five nice victory points. After you complete the final scoring, oh, which also actually includes, of course, taking into account uh, the unique ability or the unique scoring condition of your captain. After you tally all your score together, the player with the most victory points is the winner. I find this to be a rather simple but rather enjoyable game, a good Euro game in the sense of a game that has very linear mechanics, very straightforward, but then there are interesting decisions that emerge from, from the game engine. And yes, it feels like Carcassonne with pickup and delivery, but I don't have intrinsically per se any problem with that because interesting original combinations of known elements is how most things around us happen to have come to be from recipes of food to yes also games so stories very often they're a combination of elements that we have already seen but the combination is original i think here the combination of these elements work to start with um I like the lane, the, the tile lane system in which you have some freedom, you have some variety, you don't get stuck with a single tile like you have in other games and you have to make do with that, with that element. I like that fact that you can even plan ahead a little bit, see what you have. Uh, well, if I build that island, there's a chance that I'll be able to close it, so I may chance a little bit more, I can take a calculated risk hoping that I will get the one tile that will be missing to complete the dial and then score it. It's nice to have a certain sense of what you can potentially do in the following turns, not just the fact that you do have some freedom uh, in the present turn. And other than that, the selection of, of actions that you have is definitely interesting, it gets the job done. Yes, uh, pick up and delivery it may seem a little dry, but there are various places where you can go and pick up your stuff. There are various actions in which you can do it, uh, go across the sea, go across the, the sea, yes, or go across the island, come back with a chicken on your shoulder, somebody else is coming back with a sheep on their shoulder. Um, there are different ways in which you move stuff around, which, which gives a little bit of variety to the idea, which remains per se very straightforward of picking up something from one place and dropping it off in another place. Uh, it's a simple Euro game, but I have to tell you, it's one that works, that works. And it just so happens very often when I mm, when I talk about games that seem to be inspired by Carcassonne, or in any case they have similarities, when you play them, Carcassonne will come to mind. It almost always end up saying, I almost always end up saying, it's some sort of like Carcassonne, but I like it more. And maybe it's just that I don't like Carcassonne as much as other people seem to. I enjoyed it. 
I played it quite a bit back in the day. It just never became a classic in my own personal um, personal list of favorite games. Um, maybe it's because, something I often say, the scoring system, what you do to collect points, seems to me overcomplicated when compared to what the game, after all, is, which is play a tile and so on and so forth. Uh, it just seems to me a little too laborious for what it has to offer. Uh, Explorers of the North Sea, I like more, again, people that love Carcassonne may see this as a diluted version, because I like the fact that the decisions are very simple, are very straightforward. Pick up a sheep, pick up a chicken, move it there, throw it on the ship, move it, etc, etc. Very simple, very linear, but there are so many ways that you have to score, so many... Uh, possibilities and so many different actions uh, that then still is still um, the system of actions, the space of decision that you have still brings variety to gameplay. I still think that I'm doing different things. So um, the simplicity of the game to me does not make the game feel trivial or banal. There are just so many things that I can do and maybe sometimes I will have to change direction and to change course of action because certain resources they expected become uh, become not available anymore. So um, I find it to be a very simple system, but the variety of, of, of the scoring system allows you to do many different things. And then you can specialize, try to do well in several different categories. So there's variety there in the way in which you can go about doing things, as opposed to having one, two, three systems of scoring, but then they become very convoluted and and that is, to me, a little less interesting. If I'm playing a simple game, I want a game that has a nice variety of simple, straightforward ideas, and this is precisely what we have here. So I like gameplay. This being said, uh, gameplay will definitely have different flavors depending on the number of players that you have. With two players, it, ma it may, it doesn't have to, but it may play as a multiplayer solo. You may develop in one area, I develop in another one, and everybody lives happily ever after. Which makes it a good play with your spouse game. Um, at least in my family, I could play this one with my wife, because my wife doesn't like games that are very confrontational, where you're just about... Uh, uh, backstabbing and stealing stuff from each other, etc. etc. I, I haven't played with her, but I see how she will like this. I'm, I have my own little system of islands and I am doing my stuff. You do your stuff and let's see who comes up with the most efficient uh, engine. So the fact that does not the game does not have to have a confrontational element uh, makes it desirable, makes it playable with two players, with couples, or in any case with with players uh, that like two-player games and do not necessarily dig uh, confrontational games. With more players, so well, now we're fighting for position and we're getting each other's way, so the game becomes much more confrontational. It has much more of a backstabbing element. And you can also play that way with two players, mind you, that is totally possible. It's not mandatory. But with four players, then, of course, getting majority is not as obvious as it was before, where we only have, like, two areas far from one another, and it takes so, it would take so long for me to get where you are. The stealing from you is not nearly as interesting as developing my own thing. Uh, but with more players, then everybody will be fighting for position. Everybody will be trying to... Um, to outnumber other people with the majority. When you put a settlement, that limits the number of settlements that you can uh, you can build around that an outpost a settlement that's like Selves or Catan. When you build an outpost, that limits the other outposts that can build around it. So again, it may be a race to gaining the right spot to block other areas. So, so definitely, it has a confrontational element that will not necessarily uh, become an important element with with any number of players, but it most likely will become an important element when you're playing with three or four players. So take that into account, uh, and that of course is, can be part of the fun, then timing things well, you know, it's just about at some point I'll do this, but timing things, getting out of your way a little bit to get a minor advantage because that may cause a fairly major uh, disadvantage for somebody else may become an interesting an interesting decision. So there is there is that element. Um, another caveat, of course, uh, is the potential for analysis paralysis. Uh, players need to, uh, if you have two than, more than two players, especially need to look at the tasks that they have and try to figure out what they want to do next, plan their move in advance. And of course, maybe you'll put a tile there that will change things, but in many cases, it will be possible to plan what you do 
doing your next turn. It's not a game that will take 15 minutes per turn because it really is so simple. And if players are paying attention, then it really is, okay, I'm gonna play a tile, I'm gonna move, 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 pick up one thing. That can be literally, literally how long it takes you to play your turn, draw a tile, done. But if players just stare at the board, uh, thinking what they can do next, etc., etc. So try to have a default plan, which you may have to adjust if people steal resources or put tiles where you were planning to, but doesn't have to be, it doesn't necessarily have to be adjusted in many cases, it will not be. And so uh, the game will keep flowing well. I see at least the potential for analysis paralysis. I didn't experience it, but I see how that, that may become a factor with other groups. Overall, this is a good game, good, simple Euro game that may appeal to players that are not big fans of Carcassonne such as myself, but do not mind laying a tile here and there in their games, or players that do enjoy Carcassonne and want to see a gameplay that works in a different way. Um, pick up and delivery games, I don't mind them at all sometimes, however, they do come in the form of like very complex or long to play train game. This one gives you that fun mechanics uh, in a way that is very easy to digest, very playable, easy to teach, very linear. The components are very attractive, so it will be easier to get other people to play to play the game. The fact that, again, you may sell it to your friends, sell in the sense of like convincing them to play the game, it's your game, keep it. Um, convincing them to play, say, you know, it's kind of like Carcassonne, but it's slightly different, that of course may... Um, may bring interest towards the game. So I say it's a game that if you enjoy it should be fairly easy to to get to the table. Not a filler, not a filler in any sense of the word, but uh, longer than a filler but definitely light and enjoyable. In some cases it could be played as the second game of the night or the first game of the night as a warm-up activity before the big big beast without Explorers of the North Sea being exactly a filler, but simple, straightforward Euro game with smooth mechanics, a nice space, an interesting space of decision, and attractive components. Definitely a good game.